welcome back to the video course on fluid mechanics. In the last few lectures, we were discussing about the introductory theories on fluid mechanics, introduction to various fluid properties and then we discussed about fluid statics, its related theories and uh, then uh, we have discussed about buoyancy, pressure, fluid pressure, center of pressure, meta center etcetera. So, today uh, we will discuss the another topic fluid kinematics. So, the main objectives of the topic on kinematics of fluid flow is to introduce various aspects of fluid motion without being concerned with the actual forces necessary to produce the motion. Then the other objectives of this topic are to introduce the kinematics of the motion, the velocity and acceleration of the fluid and uh, the description and visualization without considering the force. And uh, then we will introduce the fluid dynamics and uh, finally, to understand the fluid motion through the kinematics of fluid flow. So, that is the important objectives of this section on kinematics of fluid flow. So, as we have already discussed the kinematics of fluid flow means say the fluid flow is taking place due to various forces, but when we consider the fluid motion say here in this uh, kinematics of fluid flow we will not consider the forces as such, but without considering the force what happens to the fluid or how the fluid is moving say how the velocity can be calculated, how the acceleration can be calculated and then we will uh, go to the various uh, say the principles of fluid mechanics like consideration of mass, consideration of momentum based upon the uh, fluid kinematics. So, if you consider the various examples of fluid motions like uh, the smoke emerging from a chimney or the flow of the atmosphere as indicated by the motion of clouds or the motion of waves in a lake. So, all these fluid motions say here generally when we try to analyze all this fluid motion say the, the there can be considerable insight to this fluid motion say by considering the kinematics of such a flows without being concerned with the specific force that drives them. So, the smoke emerging from a chimney there is a force which is uh, say taking place which is uh, driving the or the which uh, moves the smoke or say the, the wind uh, or the atmospheric motions uh, or the motion of clouds and or the waves in a lake all these there are some forces, but we the analysis will be much simpler when we consider this uh, say fluid uh, phenomena or fluid motion without much concern to the specific force that drive them. So, that is the importance of this uh, kinematics of fluid flow. So, we will be considering this session the kinematics of uh, fluid flow uh, with respect to these various uh, fluid motions. So, without giving much attention to the force uh, driving this uh, say the driving force uh, which which we are which the fluid which due to this uh, the fluid is moving. So, uh, say we will be considering the various aspects of uh, kinematics of fluid flow uh, starting from the uh, the velocity field and then we will discuss the Lagrangian and Eulerian concepts uh, and then we will discuss about the acceleration field uh, etcetera. So, now uh, say the fluid parameters by field uh, representation as I mentioned earlier the fluid movement is say when you consider the fluid movement it is the movement is say in uh, with respect to space as well as time. So, if you consider the space say when we consider the three dimensional motion of a fluid. So, with respect to x y z uh, axis and then uh, time t will be also will be there. So, the fluid motion is with respect to space and then with respect to time. So, the fluid parameters are generally represented by the space say the space coordinate x y z and then the time t. So, for example, the as shown in this figure say here uh, say the fluid is moving say in a pipe or in a in an open channel when the fluid is moving. So, the motion is with respect to space and then with respect to time. So, that we can represent as shown in this figure the uh, velocity field can be represented as say v is equal to say u x y z 
t of say i the unit vector plus v x y z t of the unit vector j plus w x y z t uh, the unit vector k. So, uh, since the velocity is um, uh, say uh, the it, it has got a direction as well as magnitude. So, that we can we will be representing generally with respect to i j and k which are the unit vectors and then u here u v and uh, w are the magnitude of the velocity movement and uh, the finally, the velocity uh, field can be represented as v is equal to uh, u i plus v j plus w k where u v w r depend upon the, the spatial coordinate x y z uh, and time t. And then finally, the speed of flow we can represent say when we are considering a pipe flow or when we are considering uh, an open channel flow or any kind of flow, we can represent the speed of flow as say it will be the, the absolute value of this uh, v, uh, the it, it can be represented as square root of u square plus v square plus w square as uh, shown in this uh, uh, slide. So, the speed of flow is say u square root of u square plus v square plus w square uh, that gives the speed of flow. So, the velocity field is generally represented as the uh, as a uh, the function of space uh, spatial coordinate x y z and uh, time. So, here you can see that a particle is moving uh, from a position a to uh, say another position uh, uh, at time t the position is here and the at time t plus delta t the uh, particle is moving from this position to the new position. So, that uh, he, here this uh, position vector we can if you draw the position vector. So, this r a t is the initial position vector and then uh, r a t plus delta t is the the, uh, the present position position of the fluid particle. So, with respect to this we the particle is uh, uh, located in terms of the position vector and then with respect to this only we will be describing the movement of a fluid particle uh, in any uh, uh, fluid media. So, uh, when we represent the velocity uh, say here the this position will be with respect to x y z coordinate and time the current time here and then the new position will be also uh, rep represented in terms of the new position x y z and uh, then time t. So, the particle location in terms of the position vector. So, here say in this slide you can see that a velocity field say for example, uh, say in a river there is a flow takes place here you can see that say the, the flow is uh, say uh, the, with respect to various uh, uh, flow conditions the flow can be th this direction or the other direction. So, the flow velocity vectors say the velocity vector is we can uh, represent with respect to spatial coordinate x y z and also with respect to time. So, here this figure shows the say actually this figure here some uh, contamination uh, or the some plume is introduced is uh, introduced in this river system and then how it is moving. So, with respect to that uh, generally we will be uh, solving the for this kind of problem we will be solving the first the hydrodynamics or the velocity we will be de determining and then with respect to that the velocity only we will be describing the, the contaminant movements or the, the plume movement we will be describing with respect to the, the velocity vector. So, it is very important that we should know the velocity field that means uh, with respect to space and with respect to time. So, how the velocity is changing that is very important that is actually the, uh, uh, the major problem as far as uh, fluid dynamics or fluid the the uh, fluid flow is concerned the velocity field or the velocity de determination with respect to space and time is uh, very important. So, as you can see in this uh, slide and then also the velocity field we can uh, say with respect to particle flow trace we can trace as shown in this figure we can trace the particle say how it is moving say with respect to either path line or with respect to either streamlines uh, we can uh, represent the velocity the, the flow how it takes place and then we can represent as shown here they say the, this, this is actually a river system joining an actuary. So, how it is behaving uh, with respect to the velocity field we can represent with respect to the the, uh, the path lines and streamlines and as shown in the previous slide we can also use velocity vectors to represent the uh, velocity field. So, now 
as I mentioned, so here we will just uh, discuss a brief uh, example problem uh, how to determine the velocity field. As I mentioned, uh, since the velocity is uh, say varying uh, say in a, with respect to x, y, uh, z direction, so that uh, uh, say we, we will be determining the, the velocity field with respect to the, the uh, x, y, z coordinate as well as the uh, the uh, time. So, the problem here is, uh, so the example problem here is uh, the velocity field, uh, uh, the velocity in a flow field is expressed as uh, v, uh, v bar is equal to the velocity vector is equal to 7 t plus 2 x y uh, i, the unit vector i plus minus 2 y z minus 4 t uh, unit vector j plus minus y z plus z square by 8 unit vector k. So, this is the velocity field is represented by uh, this uh, uh, this function given with respect to i, j and k. So, uh, and uh, the, say the magnitude is magnitude in x, y, z directions are represented by say this quantity gives uh, the uh, x direction that means uh, velocity component u so is given by 70 plus 2 x y and the velocity component uh, in y direction v is given by minus 2 y z minus 40 and the velocity component in uh, z direction w is represented here as minus y z plus z square by 8. So, we want to determine the magnitude of velocity at a point q, the, q, the position of q is x equal to 3, y is equal to minus 1, uh, z is equal to 2. Uh, so, at time uh, t is equal to 3. So, the, the coordinate system say x, y, z is given here and time also uh, given. So, we want to determine the magnitude of the velocity at a point x equal to 3, y is equal to minus 1, uh, z is equal to t at time t is equal to 3. So, here this the function the velocity field is represented already by given by this v is equal to this function. So, this we can represent um, say as a vector say uh, as we have discussed say the velocity can be represented as the velocity vectors u v w and with respect to the i j k triad uh, as uh, u i plus v j plus w k where i j k are the unit vectors in x y z direction and u v w are the velocity uh, in x y z direction. So, here v is represented and as I mentioned u is here with respect to the, the given equation for velocity for u is 70 plus 2 x y and v is minus 2 y z minus 40 and w the velocity uh, in z direction is minus y z plus z square by 8. So, the, the position of the point is already given x equal to 3, y is equal to minus 1 and z is equal to uh, 2 and the time is also given as 3. So, that now we can determine the the magnitude of velocity in x direction u q we will substitute this value of uh, the values here in for u. So, that we can write u q is equal to that means, the velocity uh, component u uh, at point q is uh, say uh, 7 into time 3 t is equal to 3. So, 7 into 3 plus 2 into 3 into minus 1. So, that will give uh, 15 as the, as the result here. So, u q is equal to 15 and then uh, v q that the velocity in uh, y direction at uh, point q is given as v q is equal to minus uh, say, say here the, the value is minus 2 y z minus 40. So, minus of 2 into minus 1 since uh, y is minus 1 in uh, and time is t z is 2. So, minus 2 into minus 1 2 plus uh, time is 3. So, 4 into 3. So, that will give v q as minus 8. So, similarly uh, we can determine uh, w q so, w q is given as minus y z plus z square by 8. So, that is uh, so if you substitute for y and z. So, y is minus 1. So, minus of minus 1 into 2 z is uh, 2 and then plus 2 square by 8. So, that will give a value of 2.5. So, finally, as we have seen uh, the velocity can be the magnitude of the uh, velocity at the point q can be determined by taking square root of uh, u q square plus v q square plus w q square. So, here it is uh, v q the magnitude of the velocity is equal to square root of say uh, 15 square plus minus 8 square plus 2.5 square that is equal to square root of 295.25 and that is equal to 17.18. So, its corresponding units can be put here say either meter per second or centimeters per second depending upon the problem. So, like this say 
the velocity can be represented uh, in x y with respect to the space x y z and then time and then uh, we if you want to determine the the uh, new position of the the velocity if the function uh, the velocity variation as represented in this uh, figure is known then uh, we can determine the uh, the magnitude of the velocity so this is the velocity field so here uh, the velocity can be uh, represent with respect to space and time so like this the velocity field is determined now uh, we will discuss about the uh, flow field description. So, in the introductory lecture, we have seen uh, the various aspects of how a flow, flow field can be represented. So, there we discuss we discussed about two kinds of uh, fluid flow um, uh, field description. So, first one is uh, one was uh, Eulerian description, and second uh, one which we discussed was uh, Lagrangian description. So, here further we will discuss uh, since we are now discussing the uh, kinematics of fluid flow. So, further we will discuss the these two description fluid flow description. So, first one is the Eulerian description. So, as uh, we have seen earlier, so the Eulerian description uses the field concept. So, as we have already seen the velocity field or the acceleration field or the pressure field whatever it is. So, here the Eulerian description uses the field concept and the fluid motion is given by uh, completely prescribing the necessary properties such as the, uh, uh, the fluid properties such as pressure, density, velocity etcetera as functions of space and time. So, as we have already seen the velocity here is represented as a function of x, y, z coordinates and time t. So, so, in the Eulerian description the fluid motion is given by uh, prescribing the necessary properties say properties can be uh, velocity or pressure or density whatever it is uh, as a function of the space and time. So, now uh, if you use the Eulerian description uh, say from this method uh, we obtain the information about the flow in terms of what happens at fixed points in space as the fluid flows past those, those points. So, what we will be doing same. Uh, if you consider the fluid motion uh, in a uh, say uh, in an open channel or in a pipe flow uh, say for example, let us consider a river flow here. So, this is a river flow. Uh, so, what we are doing here is say with respect to say the flow, flow is taking place all the time. So, now we will be considering a particular section say here uh, 1 1 or uh, say section uh, 2 2 and then uh, say between this section 1 1 and 2 2 what happens uh, say to the various fluid flow properties like uh, velocity how it is changing or uh, how the pressure is changing or the various other fluid flow uh, parameters are changing. So, that is what we we are uh, generally uh, describing in the Eulerian description. So, generally we saying most of the fluid flow problems as uh, we have discussed earlier we will be generally using Eulerian description. So, from this we are getting the information as say uh, as the flow pro say progresses say in terms of what happens at fixed point. So, here the fixed point which you are considering this section 1 1 or even it can be a fixed point or it can be a section uh, like this. Uh, so, with respect to this what happens for, for the fluid properties say when the fluid flow is moving from say one section to another or at that particular section with respect to time what happens to the fluid flow. So, the, that is the way which we will be describing the fluid flow in the uh, Eulerian or Eulerian uh, description. So, here you can see in this figure say uh, uh, here a river flow takes place and uh, the concentration higher concentration or the uh, contaminant bloom is introduced at this position. And then if you want to see in the Eulerian description what we can do is say uh, there can be an observation point as uh, shown in this slide there can be an observation point like this and then say we are what we will be describing is when the river flow takes place say with respect to time say we will be checking what happens uh, say whether the contaminant the concentration is in, uh, say how it is varying with respect to uh, say the, this particular section uh, with respect to time how it is varying. So, if you plot this for this particular position then you can see the contamination the concentration will be re reducing as the flow proceeds like this. So, this graph shows how it will be behaving. So, this shows the uh, Eulerian description uh, in a fluid flow. So, as uh, uh, we have discussed um, earlier. So, generally the Eulerian description is uh, very much used 
useful in fluid mechanics and most of our fluid flow analysis will be based upon the uh, Eulerian description. And um, the second method which we have discussed earlier uh, is uh, the Lagrangian method. So, the Lagrangian method as uh, I have mentioned. So, in the Lagrangian method um, say we will be following individual fluid particles. So, what I say if a fluid flow in an open channel or in a, uh, in a river flow or in a pipe flow then what is what we are discussing is same uh, if this is the uh, flow or river flow uh, then say we will be chasing a particular particle. So, then with respect to this uh, this say t is equal to 0 then say t is equal to t 1 or uh, say uh, t is equal to t 2 uh, or then uh, t is equal to t 3. So, like that what happens to this uh, particular fluid particle. So, that is the way which we are chasing out in the Lagrangian method. So, Lagrangian method uh, we follow the individual fluid particles as they move and uh, then determine how the fluid properties associated with this particles change as a function of time. So, this is mainly with respect to time what happens and the position is anyway with respect to fluid particle movement it is always changing. So, the one fluid, particular fluid particles are traced and then what happens to those particles. So, that is what uh, we, we are doing in the Lagrangian method. So, here the fluid particles are tagged or identified and then uh, say uh, as time progresses what happens to those particles. So, that we are is what we are describing. And uh, since as you can see that uh, fluid uh, motion or fluid flow is concerned it is very difficult to track uh, individual particles uh, like this and then see what happens to those particles. So, generally uh, this uh, Lagrangian method is uh, uh, very rarely used in fluid flow problems due to its difficulty to track a particular particle or to tag a particular particle and then what happens to that particular particle it is very difficult to do this kind of uh, uh, say, uh, say analysis. So, generally for most of the fluid mechanics problem Eulerian method is used since it is much simpler and then uh, we get the information what we are looking for uh, say especially at particular sections uh, with respect to time we are getting. So, that is the most of the time we will be uh, using Eulerian method uh, in the uh, fluid mechanics of fluid flow analysis. So, finally, in this slide, so here uh, th this slide shows uh, uh, how uh, the the uh, Eulerian approach and Lagrangian approach is uh, used uh, as far as uh, fluid flow analysis is concerned. So, here so you can see that uh, say the fluid is moving say uh, from, from a from a section a channel like this. So, here say in the Eulerian approach say we are taking say considering a particular point uh, at a particular section here like this and say the point is at a from this phase x at a distance of x 0 and y 0 we are considering a particular point say the location is t is equal to t x 0 y 0 t. So, uh, what happens to fluid flow as far as this particular point is concerned. So, that is uh, we will be uh, studying in the Eulerian approach. Uh, so, this will be generally with respect to time how the fluid is behaving, but as far as Lagrangian approach is concerned here you can see it is uh, mainly with respect to time. So, we are we have only tracked one particular particle and then from this position to this position how it goes or like that we are chasing out the particular particle and then we are um, uh, describing the flow properties with respect to the properties for this uh, particular particle is concerned and that that is the Lagrangian approach. So, uh, even though we, we, we rarely use Lagrangian approach, but uh, once the fluid flow uh, parameters are known we can um, uh, convert into Eulerian description or from the Eulerian description to Lagrangian description also the conversion is uh, possible. So, now let us discuss a, a small example. Uh, how we can uh, utilize this um, um, uh, say Eulerian approach and Lagrangian approach uh, as far as uh, fluid flow uh, uh, field description is concerned. So, here the problem which we are discussing is say here the flow field description. So, uh, in an experiment of flow experiments we are conducted in a laboratory flow. So, the two dimensional flow in a Lagrangian system is already obtained as x is equal to uh, x 1 uh, into e to the power lambda t uh, plus y 1 into uh, 1 minus uh, e to the power 2 lambda t. So, where lambda is a constant and t is time uh, x is the x axis uh, say here with respect to x and then with respect to y 
and then time. So, this is a two dimensional problem. So, the uh, fluid flow properties are changing with respect to the space x y uh, and uh, x y direction and time t. So, uh, here uh, say already the two dimensional flow in the Lagrangian system is given as x is equal to x 1 into e to the power minus lambda t plus y 1 into 1 minus e to the power 2 lambda t and also for, for uh, y direction is concerned it is given as y is equal to y 1 uh, into e to the power lambda t. So, this y 1 and x 1 indicates what is the initial position. So, this is uh, x 1 uh, y 1 and then say the variation with respect to x and y are given with respect to time t by this equation uh, number 1 and then equation number 2. So, we want to find an expression for uh, path line of the particle with respect to this uh, uh, Lagrangian system given and then we want to get the corresponding equation Eulerian system velocity components we want to determine. So, the problem is uh, we want an expression for path line of the particle and then Eulerian system velocity components. So, this uh, we can uh, solve say first uh, the first problem is we want to find the path line for the particle. So, path line means uh, say it should be an uh, expression without uh, any time. So, we will use this equation number 1 and 2. So, we will eliminate it, uh, t the time component to get uh, path line. So, from uh, the uh, second equation, uh, so from second equation we will get uh, e to the power lambda t is equal to y by y 1. So, the equation is given as y is equal to y 1 into e to the power lambda t. So, the, from that we can write e to the power lambda t is equal to y by y 1 and then this e to the power lambda t is already there in equation number 1 here. So, we will substitute back for this e to the power lambda t in equation number 1 here for the expression for x. So, we will get x is equal to x 1 into y 1 by y uh, since uh, e to the power lambda t is already obtained as y by y 1. So, e to the power minus lambda t will be y 1 by y. So, x is equal to x 1 into y 1 by y plus uh, y 1 into 1 minus y 1 by y uh, or square. So, this gives the expression for and the, the path line uh, description of the particle in the Lagrangian system. So, see here the, there is no time component is involved. So, this gives the expression for path line of the particle. So, now the second part of the problem is we want to get the Eulerian system velocity component as far as this with respect to the Lagrangian um, system given. So, uh, in the Eulerian system the velocity component uh, we can write as. So, since uh, uh, the Eulerian system we, we, which we are discussed is he, as he, here you can see that uh, at, as a particular at a particular position what happens. So, that gives the velocity component. So, here with respect to this slide uh, here. Uh, we, we, we will get the velocity component u x is equal to d x by d t uh, and u uh, y will be d, d y uh, by uh, d t. So, that means, velocity in the y direction will be d y by d t and velocity in x direction will be d x by d t. So, we will uh, just uh, differentiate uh, this equation number 1 here given here. Uh, that uh, if you differentiate uh, that will be the velocity component in the x direction. So, uh, we will differentiate uh, the equation x is equal to x 1 into e to the power minus lambda t plus y 1 into uh, 1 minus e to the power 2 lambda t. So, if you differentiate u x is equal to d x by d t. So, that is equal to d by d t of x 1 into e to the power minus lambda t plus y 1 into uh, 1 minus e to the power 2 lambda t. So, now uh, from this uh, if you simplify, if you differentiate and simplify, you will get an expression for velocity that is the in the Eulerian system. So, u x is equal to minus lambda x plus lambda y into e to the power minus lambda t plus e to the power minus 3 lambda t. So, so here this uh, after differentiation uh, we will simplify finally, we will get the expression for velocity as u x is equal to minus lambda x plus lambda y into e to the power minus lambda t plus uh, e to the power minus 3 lambda t. So, similarly, the velocity component in y direction we can we will get u y is d y by d t. So, that we can just differentiate since the initial equation the, the expression for y is given in the Lagrangian system as y is equal to y 1 in d to the power uh, lambda t. So, if you differentiate we will get uh, u y is equal to d y by d t that is equal to d by d t of uh, y 1 into e to the power lambda t. So, that is u y is equal to lambda 1 into 
uh, y1 into lambda into e to the power lambda t. So, that will give uh, this can be written as say since uh, y is y1 uh, into e to the power lambda t. So, u y can be written as lambda y. So, that gives the expression for the velocity components in y direction for the uh, Eulerian system. So, like this if the, the velocity field or any flow particular fluid flow uh, parameters uh, is known in one system either in Lagrangian system or in, in Eulerian system then we can convert to other system with respect to the various mathematical relationships available with respect to uh, both the system. So, now uh, now, we have seen how we describe the various fluid flow properties uh, f f with respect to two description the uh, Eulerian description and the Lagrangian description. Uh, so, as I mentioned generally we will be using the Eulerian description since it is much easier um, and uh, it is easily uh, the analysis is much simpler and we can get uh, results uh, especially since uh, in flow, fluid flow we will be much bothered about what happens uh, to flow at particular sections than uh, just tracing some fluid particle. Uh, but uh, in some cases also some problems we will be taking the Lagrangian appro approach by uh, uh, tra tracking a particular particle. So, that will be also discussed uh, later. So, now uh, with respect to this uh, 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 say the uh, field description. So, now uh, the fluid flow uh, as we have discussed earlier can be described uh, say now uh, briefly we will again review this uh, fluid flow description. So, space wise as I mentioned the flow can be uh, either one dimensional, uh, two dimensional or three dimensional uh, flow. So, so the flow as I mentioned generally the all the flows are three dimensions in nature. So, it is uh, varying with respect to x, y and uh, z and also time, but say uh, many of the problems say for example, as I mentioned when we discuss a uh, river flow. So, if you want to know say particular uh, 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 say uh, with respect to the longitudinal direction say L or here in this x direction. So, if you want to know with respect to this uh, longitudinal direction what happens to the flow for properties like velocities or the head uh, or the pressure or other parameters then it is better that we consider the fluid flow as one dimension or uh, say when we need more details the same problem we, we, we will be describing as two dimensions. So, that uh, this uh, x and uh, y both components we will be describing. So, that uh, the velocity in the, the lateral directions uh, in uh, uh, u and v will be also considered and then correspondingly the time and then the, the other parameters will be considered in two dimensions. And uh, otherwise if you are looking for much accurate uh, say description uh, the analysis and then if you are looking for a problem in three dimensions. So, that we have to consider say say for example, the, uh, the flow in a river is concerned. Uh, so, here we have to consider the depth wise also. So, what happens with respect to z direction. So, not only the longitudinal the uh, lateral plus we have to consider the depth wise also. So, depending upon the problem. So, but most of the fluid flow is concerned uh, is three dimensional nature, but uh, we will be simplifying the problem into one dimensional or two dimensional three dimensional um, problem. So, as you can see here the uh, the uh, say here say the it is a uh, river flow. So, here this slide shows what happens uh, with respect to the flow. So, here the analysis is say various section we are considering and then analysis is say with respect to this one dimensional uh, say what happens. So, space, space space is only one dimension and then with respect to time. So, the variation is with respect to this uh, uh, the length of the uh, river. So, here with respect to x and then time uh, we will be analyzing. So, this is uh, uh, special in one dimension flow is concerned we will be analyzing with respect to what is happening in 1D. So, this is a fluid flow in one dimension when we analyze as one dimension. And then the next uh, here this uh, this slide shows is the space is 2D. So, what is happening with respect to two dimensions. So, that is why all this uh, this here in this blue this uh, with respect to what happens in uh, y direction laterally also we have we, we have considered. So, that is why here this way is spatial wise uh, this is two dimension flow which you are concerned the flow is definitely three dimension, but we are simplifying the flow to two dimension and then we are analyzing as a 2D flow or two dimension flow. 
and then next here you can see the space is a three dimensional flow here. So, here the depth is also considered in a flow and then with respect to the, the length of the channel and then lateral direction. So, it is a totally three dimensional flow. So, depending upon the, uh, the necessity or depending upon the type of problem which you are dealing the, uh, the fluid flow analysis can be one dimension, two dimension or uh, three dimensions and then uh, also as uh, we have discussed earlier the time wise say uh, but the flow can be say uh, most of the time the flow will be varying with respect to time, but uh, many times we can also say that once the there is not much variation with respect to time then we can consider there is no variation with respect to time uh, for the fluid properties then we can consider as steady state flow. So, the, with respect to time uh, we can consider the fluid flow as steady uh, state flow and uh, unsteady state flow. So, in unsteady state flow definitely the fluid flow pro properties are varying uh, with respect to time. So, we have to see the, uh, the spatial variation as well as the time variation, but as far as steady state flow is concerned. So, we will be discussing uh, with respect to spatial direction only since time wise it is steady state. And uh, also uh, we have discussed uh, say generally way to describe the fluid flow we will be using various uh, fluid visualization, uh, flow visualization uh, uh, techniques and also uh, certain uh, uh, say uh, uh, lines like streamlines, streak lines and path lines uh, are uh, generally used for to describe the uh, fluid flow. So, this uh, we have uh, already seen in the previous uh, slide say how we, we are using this kind of analysis as far as um, the fluid flow description is concerned. So, here you can see the path lines uh, are used and also streamlines are used for uh, the, ve the velocity uh, description and here the streamline the velocity vectors are used and with respect to the velocity vectors we can find out the streamline. So, the streamlines path line streak lines which we have already described uh, discussed uh, in the introductory chapter um, streak lines all these uh, lines are also used uh, for the uh, fluid flow uh, description and uh, so with respect to that only we will be uh, describing what happens to the uh, fluid flow. So, uh, flow description is we, we can use this uh, various techniques. And uh, in steady state flow the streamlines, streak lines and path lines are the same. So, uh, it will be say generally used as far as these lines will be used for unsteady state uh, flow analysis. So, now we have already seen the, the velocity field and then we have seen how we can describe the fluid flow with respect to Eulerian description or with respect to Lagrangian description. So, now uh, the next topic uh, and also we have seen how we can describe the fluid flow whether it can be fluid flow can be considered in one dimension, two dimensional, three dimensional or steady state or unsteady state like that. So, now uh, we will uh, discuss the acceleration field. So, acceleration is uh, say most of the uh, uh, flow takes place due to acceleration either due to acceleration due to gravity or the uh, applied acceleration. So, acceleration field is also another important acceleration is also another important property as far as fluid flow is concerned. So, in the fluid uh, kinematics of fluid flow uh, we here we will discuss the acceleration field. So, the particle acceleration which is uh, uh, say generally here we can utilize this Newton second law which is uh, given as force is equal to um, mass into acceleration. So, uh, say we have seen two method methodologies of description of fluid flow, one is the Lagrangian method. So, as far as Lagrangian method is concerned, so generally the fluid flow is described say with respect to time only. So, the uh, in the Lagrangian method say the acceleration is described as a varying of with respect to time. So, uh, that means, a particular particle is uh, we are looking into that and how it, it is moving or how it is behaving with respect to time. So, here the space is not the major issue since we are tracking that particle. So, what happens uh, for that particle with respect to time? So, uh, the, as far as acceleration field is also concerned. So, here we will be describing say uh, the, the uh, acceleration is say with respect to time mainly the variation is with respect to time. But as far as uh, Eulerian method which we have seen earlier is in the Eulerian description we are considering a particular sections and then we will be discussing what happens to fluid flow properties at that particular section. So, here the acceleration field is concerned in the Eulerian description we will be describing A is equal to A x y uh, z 
and t time. So, the acceleration field is uh, described with respect to the space uh, x, uh, y, z and uh, time uh, t. So, and uh, so as we as we know the acceleration is time rate of change of velocity for a given particle. So, in the Lagrangian method we can write uh, acceleration a is equal to as a function of time and in the Eulerian description we can write as a function of space and time. So, here uh, this uh, figure shows say if you consider a particular the path of a particular uh, uh, fluid particle. So, for particle A, so here you can see that uh, the particle path is uh, like this. So, particle at uh, uh, particle A at time t. So, th this is here and then it is described with respect to x, y, z and then time t. So, it is uh, uh, position vector is uh, represented like this with respect to the, the velocity component in x, y, z direction. So, u a uh, v u the velocity component in the x direction, v a the velocity component, this v a is the magnitude of the final velocity and this is, uh, shows the velocity component in the uh, y direction and this gives the velocity component in the uh, z direction. So, particle a uh, the velocity is described as v a is uh, the position vector of say r and and t as described here. So, v a is v a a function of r a and t and that can be put as v a x a t y a t and z a t as shown in this uh, slide. So, uh, th that will be represented like this uh, with respect to x y uh, and z and uh, uh, but, uh, spatial direction and uh, uh, time t. So, equation of acceleration is uh, concerned. So, in the uh, the Lagrangian description generally we will be writing say with respect to u is equal to uh, del x a by del t. So, the velocity is uh, de uh, described as a uh, the, the now he, he, here we will consider the equation for acceleration. So, uh, the velocity component in the next direction u is equal to del x a by del t and v is del y a by del t and uh, uh, w is uh, uh, del z. Uh, by del t as uh, shown in this uh, figure. So, now uh, acceleration is concerned. Now, the variation is with respect to x, y, uh, z and t. So, that is why this partial is used here. So, finally, the acceleration can be written as acceleration is uh, the uh, derivative of the velocity. So, generally the acceleration is represented as uh, say a is represented as d v by uh, d t. So, if you consider the uh, the fluid flow say at particular position uh, point A, so the acceleration can be written here A A t is equal to d v A by d t. So, which is the total derivative. So, that uh, with respect to this u v w description. So, we can write now del v A by del t plus del v A uh, by del x. So, that means the acceleration is now totally represented with respect to local acceleration as well as convective acceleration. So, here the acceleration for this uh, uh, particular fluid particle uh, we will be considering with respect to the uh, say time variation is with respect to local acceleration and then convective acceleration with respect to the fluid flow how it is behaving. So, that is what we are describing here. So, the acceleration is represented as the total derivative of uh, the velocity vector uh, uh, with respect to time. So, that a, a, a is equal to d v a by d t. So, that can be represented as a local acceleration del v a by del, uh, del t plus del v a by del x of d x a by d t. So, this is with respect to the velocity component in, uh, in x direction u plus del v a by del y plus into d y a by d t. So, this is with respect to the velocity component y direction plus del v a by del z plus into del z d by d z d by d t. So, this gives the total acceleration as far as the fluid uh, movement is concerned. So, this uh, one part is the local acceleration and other part is the convective uh, acceleration. So, as indicated uh, here in this uh, figure. So, uh, here this d x a by d t can be represented as u and uh, d y a by d t can be represented as uh, v and uh, d z a by d t can be represented as w. So, now if we substitute finally, the total acceleration 
uh, can be represented as shown in this slide as A is equal to the del B by del T which is the local acceleration plus the convective acceleration is given as U into del V by del X uh, uh, plus uh, V into del V by del Y plus W into del V by del Z. So, this is the, the, the general uh, the, velo the acceleration as a vector vectorial representation. It, so, acceleration since it varies with respect to space and time. Uh, so, that direction and magnitude is there. So, acceleration we can represent it in terms terms of uh, the x direction, y direction and uh, z direction. So, with respect to this general uh, description of the acceleration we can write x is equal to uh, del u by del t uh, plus uh, u into del u by del x plus v into del u by del y plus w into del u by del z. So, this expression is obtained uh, directly from this general expression for acceleration. So, this is x direction acceleration is given a x is equal to del u by del t plus u into del u by del x plus v into del u by del y plus w into del u by del z. So, similarly, we can uh, write uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the acceleration in x uh, direction, y direction and z direction. So, as I mentioned, so this term here del u by del t is the local acceleration that means with respect to the uh, the x component the, uh, the uh, acceleration in x direction a x is with respect to uh, the velocity in x direction what happens that means local acceleration with respect to time and then the other terms are called the convective acceleration that means with respect to the velocity u v w how the acceleration takes place. So, these three terms are called convective acceleration and the first term is called the, the local acceleration. So, similarly we can write the acceleration in uh, y direction as uh, a y is equal to del v by del t plus u into del v by del x plus v into del v by del y plus w into del v by del z and then acceleration in z direction can be written as del w by del t plus u del w by del x plus v into del w by del y plus w into del w by del z. So, the, the acceleration in x y z direction is represented as a local acceleration term plus convective terms. So, this is the general uh, methodology used for the, the, the determination of acceleration. So, this a x a y and a e z are called the components of acceleration a x a y a e z are called the components of uh, acceleration. So, here you can see that in all this uh, problem which we, we have seen so far the uh, analysis the full flow analysis which we have discussed is mainly in terms of the the, the without considering the force which we the, the which drives the flow we are we are not concerned now with the force but uh, later say this is the beginning as far as this topic is concerned so, so later we will be discussing all that also so uh, here the uh, the operator which we have discussed this is the total derivative is generally so now in the previous slide uh, we have seen say here uh, the acceleration we have seen with respect to the x, y, z uh, components. So, so, with respect to this, the operator we define the total derivative as d by d t is equal to the, uh, the local derivative del by del t that means, with respect to time and then u into del of del by del, del x plus v into del, del, del by del y plus w into del of del by del z. So, this depends upon the properties of if it is x direction this uh, here will be putting uh, u, y direction will be putting v and uh, z direction will be putting uh, w. So, these uh, terms are called uh, say the term as material derivative. So, these are term as material derivative and uh, this describes the time rates of change for given particle. So, the time uh, rates of change for given particle is uh, given by this total derivative termed as uh, material derivative. So, this uh, we will be using uh, in um, um, most of our derivations later stages. Though. So, the the rate of change of for given particle or the term as material derivative, the total derivative will be described with respect to a local term plus the convective term here u v uh, and uh, w. So, further we will be describing uh, the, the, the applications the 
uh, of the kinematics uh, fluid flow kinematics and then for the derivation derivative derivations or the we will derive various equation as far as flow uh, uh, flow kinematics is concerned and then uh, we, that to finally will be uh, with respect to that one we will be proceeding to the flow flow dynamics <coughs>